Dr. Z, I just want to start with you because you're on the front lines, you're seeing it happen. And so just tell us what it's like when you're in the hospital this week as compared to in the past. I mean, I think in one word, it's, it's heartbreaking. Um, the last time I was on service, I took care of five patients who had COVID. And one of those patients recovered and was able to discharge from the hospital after about a week. Um, I sent two patients home on hospice. One went to a nursing home, and he'll be in a mandatory 14-day quarantine there. And he, he, I don't know if he's going to live past quarantine. The other patient I discharged on hospice was 41 years old, and she was terrified of dying alone. And, and the other two patients I had were a married couple in their 80s. Um, and I admitted the wife the day before I admitted her husband to the hospital. And that was the first time they'd been separated in 62 years. Um, we were able to put them in a, in a room together um, just so they could be together, which, you know, typically these patients with COVID are isolated in the hospital and it's, they're alone. Um, they don't have visitors and they're scared. And I, sorry, you know, the, the chances that a couple in their 80s are both going to go home after being admitted are, are low. Um, because the chances that they survive are, are not good. And the wife got sicker and sicker. And she died in the hospital. And her husband had to watch her die. And so he had to see that fear and that grief. Um, and I, I don't think it's, I don't think you can describe how that feels to us as their caretakers to have to see that kind of suffering from patients. And it's, you know, it's, that was me in one day at the hospital. This is, all of my colleagues are experiencing this at every hospital across Minnesota. And I think it's just really hard to comprehend that weight. Oh my gosh, Dr. G, we're so sorry. And obviously we all um, can see how the toll it's taking on you. And I think it's the feeling of that people are dying alone it's so heartbreaking. And I know that when you talk to people who are coming in and you ask them where they got it or how they got it, or if they know how they got it, what are they telling you? You know, Hennepin County Medical Center, where I work is, we're located in downtown Minneapolis. And so we we're a safety net hospital that serves this really amazing and diverse patient population. But it is a lot of patients from marginalized communities and people that have fewer resources and less access. And so these are not patients that are getting COVID because they're going to bars and restaurants and, and parties. You know, these are people that are trying to stay safe, but they're getting they're getting exposed because they're interacting with somebody that has COVID. And so we're seeing a lot of essential workers that, that can't stay at home. Um, we see a lot of families that have housing insecurity, so they have no homes to go to. Uh, we see nursing home patients who are already suffering because they're not allowed to have visitors and they've been isolated for months now, but somehow they're getting exposed. Um, we're seeing healthcare workers, you know, we're taking care of colleagues who we see in the halls every day and people we work with that we're now having to take care of patients. And we see entire families who can't isolate from each other that are, that are getting sick. Um, I took care of a woman who, you know, after over a month in the ICU was recovering from COVID. And that should be a win. But we were trying to call her family every day to give them an update and we couldn't get a hold of anyone. And then one day we found out it's because her husband had died of COVID and her daughter had died of COVID all while she was in the hospital. And so how do you tell somebody that? How do you tell somebody that their family has died? <sighs> uh, just one more question for you, Dr. Z, and I know how hard this is, and Andy will come to you in just a second. But we see the headlines in the papers in Minneapolis. We see, and it's not just running out of beds. It's not that the beds are necessarily all full. It's that there aren't enough of you. There aren't enough medical workers at this point to care for yeah. all the people who are coming in sick. So talk to me about the strain on the system. 
I think for us as healthcare workers, when, when we see the numbers of the thousands of people in Minnesota that are getting tested positive every day, it, it's really, it's terrifying because we can find physical space. You know, we can make rooms. We have made rooms. We can have, get ventilators. We can get equipment, but we can't create doctors. Um, we can't create nurses to take care of patients. We can't create respiratory therapists to, to manage the ventilators. And and when thousands of people are getting sick, that just means there's there's more risk for a healthcare worker to get sick, for a healthcare worker to be exposed and then be quarantined. And I, I, I think we're all just really, really scared of what's to come because the hospitals are already full, you know, and not just with COVID, it's with people having heart attacks and people have other pneumonias and people have cancer and people have car accidents and they all need hospital beds and they all need staff to be able to take care of them. Andy, it's just so heartbreaking. I mean, when somebody like Dr. Z can bring us inside what's really going on and how people are really feeling, it obviously brings it home for all of us. Well, I, I hope CNN plays Dr. Z's comments over and over and over again for the next few weeks uh, because um, the this, this story is incredible. I could barely listen to it. She's in my hometown. She's a hometown hero. She is. I know what she goes through every day and people like her and um, people don't get it. Um, it's, and we can't turn an eye to it. And CNN plays an incredibly valuable role in giving Dr. Z a voice because um, otherwise no one listens, no one hears, no one sees what, what she goes through and uh, they think it can't happen. But I think this gets, this is the kind of thing that does start to get through to people. So I'm grateful that you spoke up, Dr. I'm, of course, grateful for all you're doing uh, for this community. Andy, I, I think that the vaccine news is wonderful, and it has created so much hope. It, it's a marvel of science, but it's not going to help us tomorrow or next week or three weeks from now, really. And I think people need to listen to Dr. Z. What do you want people to hear from this now? And what do you want people to do about it now? Well, here's how it does help us. It helps us understand that this isn't going to go on forever. It helps us understand that we are, we are actually going to see uh, the results of amazing science. Incredible time. January 11th to December 13th, from the moment that this was sequenced and sent to the U.S. to the first time it will be in people's arms. Uh, is an incredible feat of science. And we should that should make us feel optimistic. That should make us feel comfortable that come Memorial Day and come Fourth of July, it won't be like Thanksgiving. We will have opportunities to be with our friends and with our family. Um, so what that should help us understand is that these next few weeks are only weeks. We've had people have to suffer through these things for years. Um, and these next few weeks, while they're going to be tough, we have to keep Dr. Z and people like Dr. Z whole as much as possible so she can do her job and her colleagues can do her job. And then after that, um, we will be coming out of this because the vaccine will not only help protect us, it will dramatically reduce the spread. Um, and that's around the corner. We're not there yet. And people need to wait uh, for that to happen. Dr. Z, what can the rest of us do for you? What can we do this week? What can we do as we approach Thanksgiving? I think that what we are, are the healthcare workers are asking of the public is for, for everybody else to step up to become the front lines. You know, I can't, I can't prevent anyone from getting COVID. All I can do is try to keep COVID from killing you. And so we are not the front lines, you know, we're, we're the last line of defense. And so what we need is for people to step up and to wear masks and, and to distance from people and just try to keep themselves safe and everybody else safe. Dr. Z, thank you uh, for the work that you're doing. Thank you. I mean, that's all we can say is thank you. Uh, and thank you for coming on and sharing your story. It's so important for people to hear. I really hope that they're listening. Andy Slava, thank, thank you to you as well. Sobering, really, yeah. really sad and sobering. Just the stuff, I mean, I, it always gets me the stuff about the being alone, 41 years old, being alone and thinking that you're gonna die alone and you can't expose your family to 